This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um first dibs on signing up for a live show you get episodes with no commercials you get our video because our video is no longer available on youtube it is only on patreon and the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows but also bonus episodes each month but if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> this is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. This is your bloody happy hour, Thirsty Thursday, full episode edition. Hopefully it's your favorite day of the week. Hopefully you're ready to sip with us. I mean, who wouldn't want to be? We're going to do a full story. We're going to South Carolina. South Carolina. But, um. Maybe we should start off with. Our sponsor? I think so. Bloody Happy Hour is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash bloody and get on your way to being your best self in 2024. I mean, are you ready to crush it in 2024? Because I'm pretty sure I am. Um, And if you're thinking of starting therapy, you need to give BetterHelp a try. It's Completely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. There's just a little brief questionnaire that gets you matched with a licensed therapist, but you could also switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. How could you beat that? All you have to do is visit betterhelp.com slash bloody today and you get 10% off your first month. That is go celebrate your progress that you've already made when you go to betterhelp.com slash bloody and you get 10% off. That's great. Go do it. Let's all all get better help. Where are we going? Oh, you told us where we're going. What are we going to do when we get there? Well, I do want to start off with this little clip. And I want to see if anybody recognizes this voice. This is a 1964 report when he's again committed on another crime. And um, they talked to his mother. The patient's mother said the patient did have a lot of physical difficulties as a young child. When he was about a year old, he drank some kerosene and almost died. The doctor who treated him said his nerves would be bad for the rest of his life. After this incident, the patient began to have convulsions and would remain unconscious for as long as 10 minutes at a time. Ms. Hannah said the patient had convulsions until he was about three years old. He had bad dreams, often wake up in the middle of the night and be afraid. Ms. Hannah said, She had to sleep with him until he was about 13 years old. His mother thinks that kerosene drinking early on was the cause of his problems. I don't know. Everybody, that is good old Dick Poot, Dick Harpootlian, the attorney for Alec Murdoch. Uh (laughs) Whenever I watch this show that I watch, Uh 
and he showed up, I knew I had to do the story. <laughs> I was like, that's dick poot! That's poot! That's poot! And of course, you know, I, I'm just saying this to myself as I'm getting overexcited, which never happens. Oh my um, goodness. So that little clip was, so he was a prosecutor, Harpootlian. Uh-huh. He was, I don't know if he was on this case, but he was just in general at that time a prosecutor. Now he's a defense attorney because he's yeah defending murders. So we're going to South Carolina, not for Alec Murdoch. Okay. Not for Dick Harpoot. But we're going for Donald Henry Pee Wee Gaskins. Mm, I don't think I've ever heard of him. He is one of, if not the most prolific serial killer in South Carolina. Okay. And he is quite a mess. Is he a mess? Yes. We've been on a serial killer <coughs> trail these last couple of weeks, so that's well, good. Yeah. So he was born in Florence County, South Carolina, March 13th, 1933. His mother was not married at the time, and that's when she got pregnant with Donald, which back in the day. Red flag. Red flag. How dare you? That's you are a whore. Deal. Do not pass go. Yeah. You must go to jail. wear this scarlet letter. <laughs> right. So she ignored her haters as much as she could, but she also ignored her children. So that wasn't very good. <laughs> so there's a little bit of Take neglect. the children off the ignore list, please. Mm-hmm. And then as you heard in the clip earlier, when he was one year old, he drank kerosene and then he was having seizures. And so obviously he was not being watched if he's drinking <laughs> kerosene. So he has four half siblings. But he had the mom had different men coming in and out, and sometimes she would leave and go and spend the weekend or a week with the man, and either Pee Wee, I don't know if I'll call him, I'll call him Pee Wee and Donald the whole time. Okay. So, oh, Pee Wee would be left at home either by himself. Sometimes, it, like when he was five years old, he's left by himself, or he's what left with his half siblings, and the men like don't like him, and they're like degrading him and talking bad about him, leaving him at home for long periods of time. But he was also teased at school. So he's getting it from both sides. He's getting, like, beat and yelled at by his home family, and he's getting made fun of at school because he's a little bit of a runt. Uh, Hence the name Pee-wee. Pee-wee. Hence the name Pee-wee. So for basically the rest of his life, he's known as Pee-wee, and he... That's just, he just kind of, I don't know if he really liked the name, but he kind of had to go with it. He had to just get over it and go with it. So at 11 years old, Pee Wee decided he wanted to quit school. They all have the same story. He started working at a car shop at 11 years old. 11 years old? Yes. Different times. So he's working at this car garage, and he meets these two other boys, Danny and Marsh. And they're, like, working together, and they team up, and they become the, what they call themselves, the Trouble Trio. Okay. Okay. So they're not, like, out doing what I used to do when I was little. They're not playing in creeks. They're not going riding their bikes on the trails and, like, whatever, kid stuff. No. They are breaking into homes. Uh. (laughs) And burglarizing them. And they're also picking up sex workers. Oh, what? Wow. Yes. And they also were raping little boys in the neighborhood. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It gets, it, this is quite the start. Gosh. This is quite the start. Um, so any like kids that would try to befriend them, they just were like, oh, we're going to rape you now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. They would threat, but then like. The, and they're these, all 11, 12? Yeah, around that wow. same age. Yeah, they're all, I guess they're just all working at the car shop. And then the little boys that they are raping, they're, they go and they threaten. They're like, don't tell anybody about this or we're going to go to the police or we're going to, we know where you live and we're going to beat your family up and we're going to, you know, mess them up and stuff like that. So the those little boys never went to the police. But eventually the trio would end up breaking up because they were caught gang raping Marsh's, Marsh is one of the three boys, uh-huh. his sister. Oh, that they uh, crossed the line. I mean, <laughs> and not only that, they were caught by Marsh's father. 
Oh, God. So he's catching his son and his son's friends raping his daughter. Wow. There's a lot um, of there's a lot of rape in the story, by the way. So they broke they broke up because the parents is gonna make them broke up break up, not because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the brother's mad that they raped Mm-mm. his sister. No. Brother was like in brother. on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So dad lost his shit. He tied the boys up. He starts beating them up. Like he's like beating the shit out of them until they ble- they're bleeding and whatever. But he didn't turn them into the police. <coughs> I don't know why. Don't even ask. <coughs> so Danny and Marsh, they end up moving out of the area after this trio broke up. But Donald was like all about that life committing crimes. So he was like, it doesn't matter. I don't need my trio. I get a thrill from this. And so I'm going to continue to do this and I'm mm. going to keep breaking into homes. Nobody can stop me now. In 1946, he was 13 when he broke into the home of a woman who he had been watching. Mm, Voyeur. Um, And he knew she wasn't home. He broke into the house of this lady. And she all of a sudden shows up. And she was like, there's somebody in this house. So she grabs an axe. Oh, And now a word from our sponsors. So she grabs an axe and she starts, I guess she finds him. I mean, do you start swinging at him? (laughs) Actually, I do. (laughs) I actually do. Yes. Maybe it was winter time and she split some know. fire. From I the actually wood. do have an axe <laughs> and I have tree cutters. So it's spear- Sears. Sears. Uh-huh. Let's go to Sears. Um, so she's like, oh, hell no. I'm going to get this axe. I'm going to start swinging at you. Hit you left, right. Here we go. No. Pee Wee was like, bitch, please. He gets the axe from her. Oh. And he, they start to tussle. And eventually. He hits her in the head and in the arm, and then he flees, and he's gone. But she survives. Okay. She survives, and her survival is what led to his arrest. Okay. Okay, so he, you have to keep track of how old he is here because, oh, this is, he's 13. Okay. So God. he's doing really good. Um, so he's arrested and he's convicted of assault with a deadly weapon and the intent to kill. Okay. So then he's sent to a reform school. I guess this is his punishment because he's so young, right? Uh, troubled teens reform school called the South Carolina Industrial School for Boys. Okay. Now. Red flag. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to be there until he turned 18. But... Almost immediately upon arrival, he is already being attacked because he's so small oh. and he's peewee and he is getting raped. Everybody's oh, raped in this that's story. That's what he gets. That is what he gets. So he's being raped and he either has to accept protection from this, quote, boss boy. Which is going to be his boyfriend. Which is going to be his <laughs> little pimp. Yeah. In exchange for sex. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Um, or he's like, I just have to escape. So he has like be friends with boss boy. He's going to either get beat up, be friends with boss boy, or he's going to escape. Well, after he gets gang raped by 20 of the fellow students who were there inside the school, inside the school. So it's like, where are the adults? Oh, I know. They're probably around watching it all happen because it's a bunch of pedos. It's a public Catholic school. A bunch of pedophiles here. (laughs) Oh my goodness. So now that they leave the... Catholic priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> Donald ends up escaping from the school because he's an escape artist. Um, and you know what? 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 Co- what could you do if you escape? You're 13. You're gonna have to prostitute or sell drugs or steal or <laughs> you join the traveling carnival. <laughs> At least I'm in the military. Exactly. Traveling <laughs> carnival. So he joined it. He's like, this is my way out. I'm joining this traveling carnival. We're going to travel everywhere. Nobody's- we just had one here in Waco. I know. He was probably part of he it. Was there. He was there. So he's like, okay, you know what? I can truly not be free 
until I finish out my sentence. Because he escaped to go join the traveling carnival. So he decides to go back to the school, to the reform school. Did he lift some weights and get bigger? No, I think <laughs> he just, you know, I think his heart maybe grew a little bit of a Grinch size. Uh. But it went back down, don't worry. So it's 1951. And so he goes back to the school. Uh-huh. 1951, it's his 18th birthday, and now he's released from the school. Okay. Okay. So he stays. <clears throat> yeah. So he goes back. He stays. The whole time. Does a sentence. Yes. So then he briefly works at a tobacco plantation. Um, but this was like a normal job, and he's like, I'm used to doing illegal shit, so I'm going to have to get involved in some kind of fraud. So what he does is he gets involved with insurance fraud and he starts working and partnering with the local tobacco farmers. And what he was going to do was burn down their barns for a fee. So he would burn down the barns of farmers and get compensation from the insurance companies. Uh, And Donald would get some of the money from that. Right. So he's making good money. He's just being a barn burner. A barn burner. burner. <laughs> Literally a barn burner. So with all these barns burning down, people are like, I mean, I feel like it's a little sus. Like everywhere that Donald is, like the barn burns. And I mean, he just seems to be working every time that this barn is burning. Yeah. So what's happening? Well, one of the daughters of one of the farmers confronts him about it. Okay. And is like, uh, everybody thinks that it's you that's burning the barns down. And Donald was pissed. He's like, no, bitch, don't even try to accuse me. And then beats her with a hammer. Mm. Mm. That's what you get for confronting him. For confronting him. He's just him. trying to live his best life and burn barns and, and make get money. interest money. Okay. He's not killing people. He's burning barns. No. He beat her, bashed her in the head with the skull, split her skull, and then he fled. Okay? But guess what? He is not a good shot or hit because she also survived. What? I don't know where he's hitting these. I don't know how you can split up your skull. because he's so little. (laughs) I think it's because he's so small. You're right. (laughs) So, luckily she survives. He's once again caught. And arrested and receives a five-year sentence in prison for assault with a deadly weapon and attempted murder. Man, he was trying. He was trying to be somewhat honest. I mean, and then he got five years. I mean, that'll teach him. That'll <laughs> teach him. What is teach he like? Him. Was he like 16 now? No, at least he's 18. He's at least 18. So he's now going to serve his prison sentence in big boy prison, like real prison. Oh, like he's not he's going to the reform school. He's really going to be somebody's asshole now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he goes there and <clears throat> he ends up having the same experience that he did in reform school with the inmates, taking advantage of him. He was uh, still very small. Some would say petite. <laughs> And they just took advantage of him, raped him over and over, and they threatened his life over and over. And he was finally like, you know what? I'm starting to figure out how this prison life works. And if I want to get some respect around here, I'm going to have to become a power man. Power bottom? A power man. (laughs) What's a power man? I don't know, but that's what he said. He was starting (laughs) to be a power man. So... Power men are the most dangerous, the most feared, the most ruthless inmates that no one wants to mess with. And they run the prisons, April. They call the shots. They are power men. Okay. So he's like, "Mm, I'm tired of being picked on. I'm tired of being raped and abused. And I need to use my little squirrel brain. And I have to plan, uh, I have to plan to kill somebody in prison. That's how I'll get my cred. So he plans to kill one of the meanest inmates inside the prison. So he becomes friends with this guy, builds trust. And when this guy least expects it, he cuts his throat and kills him. Damn. He is not playing. 
He no. probably had to get jump up up onto a stool to get to this guy's throat, <laughs> but he did it. He did or it. he was maybe giving him a BJ while he was doing it, and then he did it. <laughs> Something. So he is found guilty of manslaughter, and he spent the next six months in solitary confinement. Damn. Uh, but his plan did work, and he did become a power man. Mm. Because now he's feared by but the inmates. Did he get? Is he still going to do fi- just five years, even though he killed somebody? I'm in sure there? he'll do like thirty minutes. And he's done. <laughs> it's fine. Five minute, five years plus thirty extra minutes. Yeah, five years, but really just thirty minutes. That's what it all means. So he's like, uh, after this prison, 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 precision, prison, prison. Yes, that's how we speak. Um, after that, his experience was, like, a lot more enjoyable because, you know, he wasn't getting raped. Yeah. And he was kind of in charge. Um, and, oh, did I skip the part where he married a 13-year-old? When he was how old? At 18? Yeah. Okay, so. Before he goes into prison, Before he, he goes into prison, he actually got married to a 13-year-old. Okay, must have deleted wow. that part. Wow. But they are still married at the time, um, and she would, like, write him letters and stuff in prison. Uh-huh. And I don't know, at this point, how old is he? 18. 18. So she's 13. Yeah, so th- I guess it's Norm- normal, not yeah. frowned upon. South Carolina. <laughs> um, she Change starts general. writing him letters and stuff, and they eventually get divorced. Okay. Um, by letter. Because she wrote him <laughs> that she wanted a divorce. And so then he gets real pissed because he's like, bitch, don't divorce me. I'm in prison. And how are you going to leave me yeah, like this? I'm not getting done in the ass anymore. Well, yeah. So he's like, oh, hell no. Me? I'm about to break out. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And he does. And he escapes. Bitch, like MacGyver up in here, he just escapes. He steals a car and he goes and he is going to find this yeah. little girl. He's about ready to do a whole thing. So he drives down to Florida. Uh oh. And while he's there, guess what he finds? Another man at his house. Close. Another traveling carnival. <laughs> And he joins it. I guess he just was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm leaving. I don't know. I'm not going to kill her anymore. I'm just going to. Yep. He's a, has a. He got ADHD. We get with the bearded lady. Yes. He gets. It, yes. He gets involved <laughs> with Betty Gates. No relation to Bill and Melinda. <laughs> and Betty is talking to Donald and is like, Donald, my brother, you see. He's in Tennessee, and he's in jail. Can you help me cover the bail money? And we can get him out. Okay. Okay, so this is his friend Betty. They're, like, working together, and they're kind of, like, hitting it off. And then Betty's like, actually, can can you help me get my brother out of jail? Blah, blah, blah. So Donald, like, has a crush on this Betty gal and was like, yeah, like, I want to help you. Like, I want you to live out on anything. What can I do for you? So he gets the bail money. And he drives the two of them in his stolen car, by the way, because he still escaped from prison. I mean, he's resourceful. And so they get to Tennessee and they go to get the brother out of jail. Well, Betty gives Donald a pack of cigarettes because he, he's going to give cigarettes and bell money to get him out of jail. I guess uh-huh. he needed to smoke. Well, Donald did not realize that there was uh, like a razor blade inside the cigarette box. <laughs> okay. Gosh. And so... He goes to the prison. He gives them the, he's like, hey, here's cigarettes and here's bell money to get her brother out. Whatever. So drops the stuff off. The brother does not get bailed out. But all of a sudden, um, the two, so the two of them go back to the hotel room. Donald is then like, oh, hey, boo, I need to go get some cigarettes because I need to smoke. And Betty's like, okay, bye. See you in a little bit. Well, Donald comes back to the hotel and he finds that not only is his car missing, but Betty is missing. Ooh. Well. Betty gave him a piece of s- some of his own medicine. Stole his shit. Turns out, to the surprise of little Pee Wee, Donald, that dude in prison. It's not her brother. It's not <laughs> Betty's brother. It's Brady's husband. 
And he had recently escaped from prison using a razor blade. <laughs> so Donald helped him escape. Aided in yes. it. Aided in it. Oh, my goodness. So the police show up to Donald's hotel room because they're like, we knew that you were, were just here with the giving and this guy stuff to get out. And they're like, also... You're an escape convict. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're like, um, okay, actually, we're going to have to take you back to jail, sir, because you're real fucking dumb. And why did you just show up at the jail when you're an escape convict? <laughs> okay. So they ended up arresting him and he goes back to prison. And at this point, he received nine additional months in prison <laughs> for aiding in an escape. <laughs> Okay. They're just giving him so many chances. I mean. And there's no reason to. <clears throat> no reason to. No. So he gets sent to prison again. This time he meets a guy named Frank Costello. He sounds like mm -hmm. a mom boss. Mm -hmm. And they become besties. And Frank offers him employment when he gets out. He's like, hey, bro, I'll hook you up when you get out. I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, okay, dude, bro, here we go. So, August 1961, Donald gets released. Okay. And, I mean, you know, once again, he's, it's just, whatever. He gets released from prison. He returns to Florence, South Carolina, which uh, he decides that this is where he wants to have his home and he just wants to have a normal life and blah, 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 blah. But... He can't have a normal life no. because he ne he needs to burglar people and he needs to start stealing shit again. And he can't not. He, he can't bored. not. He can't not. But this time he's like, I'm going to find a job, but he's not going to go back to the traveling carnival. Oh, he's he's above that now. He now starts working with the traveling ministry. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and no one will will think that he's like. They won't think anything of it because he's with the traveling ministry. Yeah. I mean, you can't. You're going to trust all of them. You can't not trust. Yeah, you have to trust all of them. Like, they're good people. And so everything, like, everybody's relaxed and it's fine. And, you know, they were just living there. He was just like, okay, I got this. Um, so then he, let's see. Oh, yeah. This was going to be another easy way for him to travel around and not get caught. For, cause, so he would, like, travel with them, burglarize homes, leave, travel, burglar, leave. Tra so he's, like, on on and on and on, still burglarizing, but he can't be caught because he's all over he's the place. He's a minister, yeah. Yeah, because he's a traveling minister. So um, it was a good cover, obviously. Um, and then... While one one day while the minister is preaching and doing all you know all of his godly duties, um, Donald is doing his thing. He's stealing stuff. He's not killing at this point. Okay. Um, but he's being harder and harder to trace. So in 1962. Okay. I don't even know what year we were just in. 61. Okay, you keep track of the years. So he gets caught. Raping, of course, because that's what he does. A 12-year-old 12, 12 girl. At least it's girls now. And is arrested for statutory rape. But... Oh, but you can marry a 13-year-old. Yes. Maybe because yes. they're in Tennessee now. <laughs> or whatever state they're in. Once again, he is arrested, he goes to jail, and he escapes. What? He's obviously a smart kid, resourceful. He gets into the <laughs> stolen car, and he heads to North Carolina. And in North Carolina, he meets a 17-year-old girl who he falls madly in love with okay. and then ends up marrying her. Okay. So he's already on his second marriage. I mean, he's doing better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually he would end up telling his wife, because they're married now, that he's actually on the run because he raped a 12-year-old girl <laughs> and stole a car. I mean, what's the big deal? He's yeah. being honest. D isn't that what you want in a relationship? Honesty? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, well. She is like, no, ma'am. No, sir. Good. No, sir. So she was like, she was very shocked. She didn't say anything to him at the time. But as soon as he gone, she went straight to the police station and she ratted him out and turned his ass in. Good job, good new wife. Girl. Good girl. So she turns him in. <clears throat> He's arrested. He serves six years. Oh, my God. Six years. <laughs> it's okay. like he can't get in double digits at all. So he serves his full six-year sentence. Okay. He's released in November of 1968. Okay. So Donald, he was, so he's released, but he's like, he's saying he's getting these like really dark thoughts and these feelings, like telling him to commit these awful crimes. And he just has this voice and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And he's like, oh my gosh, I want to murder someone. I want to murder someone. Like he just has that thing. Yeah. So he's like, I have no control over. He these. feels like a failure because he tried twice and he failed at it because they they're still alive. I think it just all comes down to short man syndrome. <laughs> like, yeah, you might have had childhood trauma, but I th- yeah, I'm his sure. mom's boyfriends probably raped the hell out of him when he was little. Yeah, because you so just did, don't become an eleven year old and start raping people unless it's been done to you. For some reason, old people like little people, like little. Anyway. Yeah. Short people or like No, kids? like just kids. Like um, e- or even if you're a small person. Um like Pee Wee. Mm-hmm. Mm. So he had no control over his thoughts and they wouldn't go away. So he was like, you know what? It's September. It's nineteen sixty nine. I need to go pick up a hitchhiker. And he picked up a hitchhiker and he was like, Would you be interested in performing some sexual acts? Because that's what you do. Um and since he gave her a ride, he pretty much expected it. Yeah. Uh, but she laughed at him. She was like, <laughs> no, actually, thanks for the ride, but no, no. But you know what? He did not like that because he's been made fun of. And when he's made fun of, he gets uh, real mad. You can't laugh at him. Mm-mm. So he's like seeing red and he's like, kill, kill, kill. And he pulls the car over. He beats her till she's unconscious. He rapes her. He sodomizes her. He tortures her. And then he went to a nearby swamp and tied her to a bunch of rocks. I mean, this went, this got real serious. And hoping that she would sink to the bottom of the swamp. And what's more upsetting is that she lived. (laughs) His dumb ass did this like, okay, so. Oh, yeah. So he did this along. It was like along the coastal highways or whatever is where he did it. And it it was like, let's see. Sadly, it was the first of many that he had picked up. So he basically started picking up these hitchhikers along the side. And then he created his own little cemetery. Oh. So he would start killing all these people. He would kill men. He would kill women. Purely for pleasure. Uh Uh, On average, at least once every six weeks. Okay. And he got this thrill from, like, torturing and mutilating these victims. Um, And then he knew knew what he was doing was awful, but he couldn't stop it because he had this feeling. Yeah. Whatever this urge urge is inside. Um, He went from stabbing to suffocation mutilation he even tried eating one of them but he didn't really like it he wasn't really into cannibalism even though he tried it because he was like i think i'll try new things goodness i mean he's he's very you know adventurous i guess yeah um and so then he actually ended up writing a memoir (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Uh-huh. I feel like he all he needed was ADHD medicine, and he would have been fine. <laughs> you know, and he just basically talked about how when he saw these people, he picked them up because he didn't really have a specific style. And he just, the police couldn't really figure out, like, what is this guy? Is he a serial killer? Like, is he just a random killer? Is he a spree? Like, what? I, they don't know because there was no consistency. So this memoir that he did, um, 
he would like commit it. He committed to overpowering the people. Um, and it was like by the 10th of each month there, let's see, most of the murders were people that he didn't know or considered to be weak people, I guess, Okay, which would be like prostitutes, I guess. Or just homeless people, uh-huh. or I think it was just random people uh-huh. that were just he just found along the, the side of the road. But then he also went on to kill his 15 year old niece. Why? I don't know. He called that a that was his serious murder. These other murders were weekend fun murders, but when he killed the 15 year old niece, it was serious. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. So. He probably raped her and had to kill her. Yeah, you're actually right. Um, he, I, yeah. So after he's killing all the, all of these people along the areas of the coast of South Carolina, he rarely would leave their bodies out in the open. He liked to bury them. So what he would do is dig these, you know, little graves, and he would just put the bodies and bury them. And like people around were like. I guess people around the community didn't really know what to think about him because they, because mm-hmm. at this point he's just, he's going out, he's killing these people, but he's also like living in this like neighborhood In the neighborhood. Some people think he's like just a big weirdo and he's awkward and they think maybe he has like mental disability, mm-hmm. but then some people like he has a little small group of friends. Um, one of his group of friends is, or a, a lady who is a part of his group of friends is named Doreen. And Doreen was his neighbor. This is 1973. She also had a young daughter, but she was also pregnant. And she was friends with him, looking for a ride to the bus station. Station, And so she asks him, and he takes her and the daughter for uh, to the bus station. Mm-hmm. They didn't go to the bus station. No, they took a detour. <laughs> And they actually ended up going to a secluded area in the woods. And that's where he tortured and raped the mom, killed her. And he Mm -mm. also killed the daughter. He, he's so random. He's very random. So he kept killing. And by the age of 42, he had been killing for five years. I feel like he's been killing for 30 years. Yeah. (laughs) But I, I, I think a lot of it happened like, just back to back to back to back. Um, he always worked alone. He never. He didn't want to be caught. Uh, one day, though, he was driving down the highway, and he saw a van that was broken down. There were, like, three people that were outside of the van, and they are trying to figure out what to do. He offered to give them help, but guess what? He ends up killing all of them. But he needed help getting, like, getting the van moved because he was like okay now i'm gonna go bury them in my cemetery but i need somebody to move the van so even though he usually works alone he called up his buddy walter and was like walter was this ex-con walter neely and he's like hey bro can you come and get this van and like you can like repaint it clean it up sell it like all that and Walter's like, yeah, yeah, bro, I'll like, come pick up the van. So he comes, picks up the van, takes it to his garage, paints it, and sells it. And then in a few months later, uh, the van... Mm, yeah, so the van, yeah, he does that, got the van, and then he goes on and he kills like five or six more people. But so there's still, this, this van is still hidden. Nobody knows about Mm -hmm. it. He goes on to kill more people. And then the police eventually, like, talk to Walter. Okay. The guy who hid the van. Uh Uh-huh. And they were like, okay, Walter, we know that you have something to do with this. And you, like, have something to do with Pee Wee and Donald and all of his van killings. And we need you to tell us where these bodies are buried. Okay, but so they they end up finding out that he's involved somehow. Uh-huh. So they start questioning Walter. And Walter's like, oh, yes, I did. I helped bury the bodies. And I took the van. And he just can't stop talking. And he just rats <laughs> them all out. And this is, he's tells him exactly, he's like, this is where it happened. This is where they're at. This is the cemetery they're at. 
blah, 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 everything. And so Den- or Dennis, what's his name? Donald is pissed because he's like, this is why I don't work with people because – Mm-hmm. Now you've ratted me out. Yep. I should have been doing it all by myself. I should have figured out myself what to do with this van. But now you've got me caught, and now you're turning me in. I don't know why he couldn't just leave the van there. He already took the bodies. I know. I think because he's just real dumb. So, 1975, Walter gets arrested. He Then they have the whole thing, and he is, like, basically telling the police all of this stuff so he can get a lesser sentence. Um, and then let's see. Yeah. Donald was pissed that he confided in all these people. So after Walter does all this talking, the police go to, uh, Donald's apartment and they end up finding clothing that had been worn by a woman that was on a missing person's list. Mm. So, you know, he's killed all these people, but a lot of them, they're just, like, either missing, yeah. but they don't know where the bodies are, and they're... Bu- yeah. So, they arrest him, again, for, like, the 18th time. And he gets seven years in prison. Probably gets three <laughs> seconds in prison before he escapes. They arrest him. They tell him, that, like, we know all about your little cemetery. Your friend ratted you out, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, but guess what? If you take us to this private cemetery... We will give you a lesser sentence if you take us there and you show us where all the bodies are buried. And he does that. (sighs) And police discover eight victims buried on this property. So then on April 27th, 1976, Donald and Walter are charged with eight counts of murder. And on what? May... T- Walter didn't even do it all. I mean, I know. On May 24th, the uh, Donald was convicted of murder and he was sentenced to death. Okay. Finally. So he is like, shit, I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to keep I want to keep escaping and killing. Right? So he's like, you know what? I'm going to tell him where the rest of the bodies are. Oh, there's more. Yeah. So he confesses to seven more murders. So in 1976, oh no, what happens in 1976? If he escapes. The Supreme Court. (laughs) Put a moratorium on the death penalty. Ended up ruling that the death penalty was unconstitutional. So the death sentence is now turned into seven consecutive life sentences. Is he still going to tell But that's what not the all. Bodies are? <laughs> Gosh. So not, that was 1976. Uh-huh. They said no death penalty. Well, in 1978, they changed their mind and they brought the death penalty back. <laughs> South Carolina, you don't even know. You confuse South Carolina. <laughs> so they restored it, which didn't really mean anything for him because it was already like taken away. And I guess you can't put it back. I don't know. Whatever. The whole thing. Until... He, so his sentence was then changed back to death. Uh-huh. Um, no, 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 no. It wasn't going to change back to death because it, it was like he escaped that and once they changed the law. Yeah. So then they changed it back, but he still wasn't going to be death until he killed again while incarcerated. And damn it. So now he will be able to get the death penalty. So he's staying in this high security block at South Carolina Correctional Institution, and he decided to kill a fellow death row inmate named Rudolph Tyner. And apparently Rudolph was like mentally, Mm. like, I don't know, what's the word for it? Mentally ill? Yeah, Uh yeah. And... It's, this is the this is a very weird story what's about to happen now Donald was okay Donald Peewee was hired by the son of Rudolph okay okay uh to kill him by the son of Rudolph's victim let me tell you that oh yes okay so Donald was hired by the son of Rudolph's victim to kill Rudolph okay Yes. <laughs> Donald tried many times to get rid of this guy. He tried to 
lace his fo- food with poison. Oh, because you just have poison randomly. Because you just have poison. Prison. Um, and that didn't work. Nothing seemed to be working. So he was like, mm, I'll just use some explosives. Because <laughs> that's those are just lying bit of, around. Bit of a it? jump, Donald. Bit of a jump. <laughs> kind of a leap. A little parkour on there. But so, yeah, okay, Donald. And it turns out I, I was watching this one show and he ends up like calling somebody. And I don't know how he gets this shit in there, but they sneak in these explosives. So he had like a small portable radio and he put explosives inside of the radio. He gave it to Rudolph and he was like, hey, hey, Rudolph, you want to be friends? Like, yeah, like listen to this radio and we can like talk to each other through it. And Rudolph's like, oh, yeah, like, that's so cool. And he's like, okay, so hold that at five o'clock today. Hold that radio up to your ear and I'm going to start talking to you. (laughs) And he's like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Like, that sounds awesome. And so he's like, five o'clock comes around and Rudolph is like, he's ready. Like, he's like, yeah, let's do this, bro. Let's do this. And he's like, hello. (laughs) Hello. And boom. (laughs) It goes off. And Rudolph died. Mm. Because he got exploded. So once again, Donald receives the death sentence. And he knew that at this point he was headed to the electric chair. Yeah, you are. So, of course, he starts confessing to more and more murders, trying to avoid, once again, the death penalty. He didn't want to die. And he's like, hey, I have more information over here. So, hey, pick me. I have more information. Me, 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 me. Yeah, so that's what he does. And he claimed to have committed between 100 and 110 murders. Oh, Henry Lucas. Uh, uh Uh-huh. And the last few months of his life, he worked with an author to write a book called Final Truth, Hmm. which was published in 1993, where it told his side of the story. So on September 5th, 1991... Damn. It was Donald's execution day, and he did not want to die in the electric chair, so guess what? He killed himself. He tried to commit suicide (laughs) by slitting his wrists, but it didn't work. He failed, and he survived, and they stitched him up, and his plan backfired because then they were still going on with the death with the execution and if you are familiar with any videos of watching people getting electrocuted in an electric chair they put sponges and wraps around your wrists Uh so when you have just cut your wrists that are stitched up and then you have this something compressed around it it's gonna hurt a lot (laughs) it's gonna burn and it did and he it was very painful for him which i mean i would assume electric shock is a little more painful but Yes, the bandages were super painful. I'm so sorry, Donald. I don't feel sorry for you. Poor little peewee. So September 6, 1991, around 1 a.m., Donald is hooked up to the electric chair and is removed from the planet. Wow. And it's, to this day, unclear how many victims or how many people he actually killed. Um or if he was just trying to hype himself up to make him a bigger deal, like, uh-huh. like you said, Henry Lee Lucas. But either way, it's just safe to say that this guy was a complete pl- piece of <laughs> trash can dumpster fire loser who had way too many chances and mm-hmm. got out of prison way too many times. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And wow. that's the story of Pee Wee Donald... Gaskins the third. He's not the third, but I just know that <laughs> it just felt right. <laughs> Who would oh Donald my goodness. Haskins the in South Carolina? He <coughs> all over the place. All over the place. He is just short man syndrome. He just could not he could not be still. <clears throat> he felt like he had to prove himself. That was probably the only time he felt big is when he was killing somebody. Raping and killing. Yeah. I mean, but golly, he sure was raped a lot. Oh, oh yeah. But I guess, I mean, I think I, I think it's all because he drank that kerosene. <laughs> it's all because of the kerosene. It, does it come back to the kerosene <laughs> or to the neglect or to the abuse or to ne- the yeah. short man syndrome? Which one is the main All cause? of the above. But you know what I didn't hear anything about? 
I heard nothing about porn. <laughs> well, because well, I'm sure he, he was had, the subject. He had so much going on. The the we couldn't even fit the porn into the story. His mom's boyfriend used him as like the porn tape. Oh yeah, he was definitely like yeah, he was the kid, the pedo kid. He was getting pedophiled. He was getting pedophiled. Yeah. You know he had to have been. He had to have been, and then he started doing it, and then it just went from there. Yep. So there you go. That's the story of old Pee Wee Gaskins. Oh, Pee Wee. I've South never Carolina's heard of you. Most prolific serial killer. South Carolina. Shortest man. Murdoch don't got nothing on Pee Wee. Mm-mm. I just still can't <laughs> believe Dick Poot. Oh, Harpootlian was the, the one. But so how did he come in on this again? He was just... Making a comment about... I think he... Because he was just a prosecutor at the time. Uh, and so I think as they're doing this like little show, they're okay interviewing okay. random people. And he was probably a big... I guess that must have been the county that he's in. Even though in it was Colleton County where Alec Murdaugh is tried. But that... He had to bring the lawyers into uh-huh. Colleton County. Uh-huh. And so I guess Florence County is where he practices. Wow. So. Wow. That was good. <clears throat> So that was go. good. How did you find him? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I was just, just searching. And then once I saw that, when I watched that show Dick Poot. and Dick Poot was in there, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> Count me in. Put me in, coach. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. I like it. I like it. I like it. That was so good. Um, I, we are not better people for hearing it. but <laughs> Not at all. None of these. None of the above. I he was a little creative by making his own cemetery. Like that was a little different. Yeah, and I and mean, the he fact got, that he could escape jail. That I'm like only Ted Bundy's done that that many times. And he's Demetri- done it twice. Whoever Demi- the Spider Man guy, Danello. Oh, Donatello Danello. Danello yeah. Cavacante. Yeah, Cavacante. he did it twice. No, yes. Oh. But he, how we did it was, you know, like spider crawl, you know. Yeah, was, the. But the, yeah, I think it, maybe it's just if you're a short person, you can just like squeeze, squeeze into, into these little. Yeah. But was Bundy small? No, remember he, but he um, got, stopped eating and lost a whole oh, bunch yeah, of weight. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He and went through the blamed ceiling. it on, you know, prison cafeteria food being horrible. And then he squeezed through like one of the ceiling tiles in the. But that's like, you know, that's dedication. That's like that mental. Like, because if you think about it, like. Dis- discipline. That's discipline. Yeah. Yeah. He shrunk down, shrunk down so that he could squeeze through. And I think he like crawled through vents or something. I guess if something. you're dedicated to get out of jail, you would do. Yeah. He was dedicated good. to get out and, and kill. kill. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Good so stuff. There you have it. You, there's another serial killer for you guys. We will see y'all next week for all new episodes. So tune in, send this episode to a friend. If you have not rated us in a while, go ahead and go on and give us a review. Give us a little review. Yeah. We love y'all. Y'all are the best listeners, and we need to know how y'all feel about us. Yes. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Bye, y'all. Goodbye. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure. For (laughs) sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok. So don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it It's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. <laughs>
Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hey, I'm Katie. And I'm Summer. And this is Monsters in the Attic. So we thought we'd bring people on. Yeah. It's very real. And we're fortunate to have a lot of friends who have a lot of monsters. And we can't wait to share them with you. I love that, that we're so fortunate that we have so many friends with so many monsters. Where can people find us? Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere they listen to their favorite podcast. They can find me at my therapist office. As they should. (laughs) This has been a Rogue Media Network production.